Hello, this is Ed from PractilNetworking.net. Welcome to another video in the Axis Control List video series. This is video 5, where I'll be giving you a demonstration of the configuration of named Axis Lists on a Cisco router. In the last video, we picked apart each of the fields in the syntax for named Axis List. If you're unsure what either of these fields mean, go and review the last videos. In this video, we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video by reconfiguring our numbered access list as a named access list. Recall in video 3, we went through the demonstration of configuring numbered access list, but we ran into that problem where this deny statement was appearing after this permit statement. We attempted to reconfigure this permit statement at the end by using the no command, but what that ended up doing is blowing away the entire access list. In this video, we're going to start by reconfiguring this numbered access list as a named access list. Now the syntax for named access list is very similar to numbered access list. You'll see just how easy it is to reconfigure a numbered access list as a named access list. We're going to take what we already configured and throw it into Notepad. Then we're going to go to the top and add this definition statement first line. So we'll start with the command IP access list. Then we'll specify that this is an extended access list, and then we'll provide a name. For this ACL, we'll simply call it PRACnet. Then this part is identical to what we had in numbered syntax. So all we have to do is get rid of this access list 101 at the beginning. And we can do that by doing a simple find and replace. We'll replace every entry of access list 101 with just the space, hit replace all. And that's all we have to do to reconfigure our ACL as a named access list. You'll see if I take that and put it back into my router, the router accepted all those commands. And now if I do a show run section access list, we'll see the named access list that we just configured. So you'll see that the syntax for configuring a named access list is pretty much the same as we've already covered in a numbered access list. But there are some additional features that named access list provide that doesn't exist on numbered access list. And that's what I want to focus on for the next few minutes. First, let's give ourselves a little bit more room to work. Earlier, if I scroll up, we tried to remove this line, which was this line. And then in the numbered access list, it blew away the entire ACL. Well, let's see what happens if I try and do the exact same thing with my named access list. This is the line that I want to remove, and I actually want to re-add it below this line. So I'll go into global configuration mode, and then into named extended configuration mode. That's what all this means. It's extended named access list configuration mode. And I'm simply going to do a no on this line right here. Now, if I do my show command again, you'll see that the access list still exists, except for the one line that I removed. Remember, that wasn't an option in numbered access list. In numbered access list, it blew away the entire ACL. I can simply re-add this ACL by copy and pasting it, and it'll automatically appear at the end by default. I'll again do my show command, and there's the entry we just added. Notice now it is correctly showing up after this deny, which means finally the deny that we tried to add two videos ago is doing what it's supposed to do. So, so far, we've been using this command to view our access list. We've been looking at the configuration in the running configuration of any lines that are in the section access list. But there is another command you can use to verify your access list. That command is simply show access list. Notice when I type this command, it's telling me I have an extended IP access list called PRACnet and here are the entries in that access list. Notice that the beginning is a number. This number is a sequence number. Remember I told you named access lists have the sequence number that you can use to place ACL entries in a specific location. Well, by default, every time you add a new ACL entry, they show up in increments of 10. You'll notice over here, we skipped 20 between these two. That's because we had just removed the permit statement that was in between these two and re-added it down below. That's why it seems like we skip 20, but otherwise they go in order and in increments of 10. This allows me to add new entries exactly where I want them to be. Also, this allows me 
to remove individual entries without having to do a no on the entire line, like I did up here. So let me show that to you. Notice this line over here. Remember, this line is matching a particular packet hyper-specifically, so specifically that it would never match any other packet. So remember, we did this line to show you an example of matching on source ports and destination ports. Well, let's go ahead and remove this line. But instead of copying and pasting the entire line, we can simply do a no on sequence number 40, and that'll take care of removing that line. So again, I'll go into global configuration mode, and then I'll go into extended named access list configuration mode, and I'm simply going to remove this line by typing in no 40. Now, if I do my show access list, we'll see that line 40 is gone. The other thing the sequence number lets me do is allows me to add a new entry at a specific location. This ACL entry is denying NTP traffic. Well, let's just say I have to add another deny entry that denies SSH traffic from this host to this host. Well, if I add it at the end, this less specific permit is going to take priority and that traffic will actually still be allowed. So I need to add the new deny statement in between these two entries. So again, I'll jump into named extended access list configuration mode, and I'm going to say I want this new entry to appear at line 65. So I'll simply put the line number 65, and then everything else is exactly as we've done before. The action is going to be deny. The protocol, we said uh, SSH, so that's going to be TCP. The source is going to be host 10.0.0.11. We will leave the source port omitted to say match any source port. We'll say the destination is host 45.5.5.8, and the destination port is going to equal 22 for SSH traffic. If I hit enter here, and I do my show command, we'll see that this new entry that I just added now appears in between entries 60 and 70, right at line 65. So this sequence number allows me to add entries to a specific line. Now that's some pretty cool functionality for named access list, but the thing that's really cool about named access list syntax is that you can actually use named syntax to modify numbered access list. Let me show that to you. Let's go all the way back up to where we had configured our numbered access list before. So this is what we had configured before, right before we blew it away inadvertently by trying to remove that one line. Let's go ahead and reconfigure everything we had by simply copying and pasting it into our access list. And now if I do my show run section access list command, we'll see this is our named access list, and here is the numbered access list which I've just reconfigured. But check it out. If I do show access list, which is the second show command that we learned, notice both my named access list and the newly configured numbered access list are showing up with these sequence numbers. Notice the one I just configured goes in increments of 10 because I just configured it using all the defaults. I can actually edit this numbered access list using named syntax. Let me show you. So named syntax looks like this. I'll type IP, then access list. This is an extended access list, and the ID number is 101. That's what this is right here. And then from here, I can get all the cool benefits of named syntax in numbered ACLs. For example, Remember when we tried to blow away that line and re-add it later on, but it accidentally blew away the entire ACL? Now I can simply do no 20, and this one line is going to be gone. If I do my show command again, you'll see line 20 is now gone from my numbered access list. If I wanted to make that entry reappear at line 67 or something, I would simply type the sequence number, just like a named sequence, and then the action protocol source and destination would be exactly the same. And I'm simply going to copy and paste it from before. Oops, it was line 20 right here. I'm simply going to copy and paste it from before. And now, if I do my show command again, we'll see that it appeared at line 67.
so you can use all those cool features of named access list on numbered access list as long as you use the syntax for named access list. Now, the last thing I want to show you with named access list has to do with this sequence numbers. I told you that by default, sequence numbers go in increments of 10. That means you have the option of inserting up to nine other entries in between two entries that are added at the default increment of 10. Well, what happens if you need to add more than that? Or what happens if you don't like how you seem to be skipping ACL entries every once in a while or things look a little uneven? Well, what you can do with named access list is resequence all the numbers at whatever increment you want. The command for that is IP access list resequence. Then you specify the ID number or name. So for this example, let's go ahead and resequence the numbered access list. And then you list the starting sequence number. We'll go ahead and say 3000. And then you list the increment. And for this example, we'll go ahead and say 11. Now, if I do my show access list command again, we can see that ACL 101 starts at sequence number 3000 and goes in increments of 11. This lets me re-space out all the entries in my access list in case I need to do more insertions and deletions than I had initially planned for. If I wanted to resequence something to its default sequence numbers, I would use that same command, IP access list, resequence, and then specify the name. And I would start at 10 and go in increments of 10. And this would make my ACL called PracNet appear as if it had been configured in its default configuration from the beginning. So that is the resequence command. So we spent some time giving you a demonstration of named access list syntax and showing you some of the cool new features that named access list provide over numbered access list. Some of those features included that named ACLs allow you to remove individual lines. Named ACLs allow you to insert lines at the desired location using that sequence number. Named ACLs allow you to modify numbered access list as long as you modify them with named sequence. And finally, named ACLs allow you to re-sequence the numbers as you please. Now there is one additional feature that named access list provides that numbered access list doesn't. And that feature is that named access list allows you to configure IPv6 ACLs, which we'll be covering in the next video. The key takeaway for this video is understanding these four features of named access list and the configuration demonstration of named access list that we did. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video where we discuss IPv6 access lists.